Welcome to Astro Energy with Astrologer Angel Shelley Overton. Hello and welcome to the June 19th edition of the Astro Energy Astrology Show in 2018. My name is Shelley Overton. I'm an astrologer in Orlando, Florida, and I want to welcome you to the show today. And um, honestly, to say I am lit today <laughs> is probably an understatement. I had some coffee over at Panera this morning. I went with my daughter to get um, some breakfast and you know, going out in traffic today is probably the worst thing for me. But um, anyway, we'll quickly touch on that in a minute. But it's lovely blue sky today, 84 degrees in Orlando. It feels a little warm and a little humid, but it isn't showing up in the sky just yet. So I'm sure by later today, it'll be probably a bit more cloudy. And it looks like we don't have rain until tomorrow, bless, because, you know, rain, rain, rain for weeks and weeks. It's just old. But yeah, um, my gosh, it's going to get up to 110 in Phoenix. I'm just looking at my weather app here on my Mac. And uh, yeah, that's pretty intense. Anyway, so I was out at Panera today and went with my daughter. And then I dropped her with my parents. They're going to the mall to look for stuff for my mom. Her birthday is this weekend. So I am wishing her a happy birthday. And she's my cancer sun, cancer rising. And I think she has... Venus and Cancer and Mars and Cancer and Mercury and Cancer and uh, suffice it to say she's very cancer heavy and because of all that cancer she's kind of kicked over to the other side and she acts more like a Capricorn and um, I think it just makes her feel more safe to look at things in a practical pragmatic way and so that can happen. Anyway, cancer, we're coming into the sign of cancer here in a couple of days. I've got so many things going on here trying to talk. Um, I've got my iPhone. I've got apps open on the computer. I've printed out a, a chart for today's show, and I posted the chart on my Facebook page. So there's an Astro Energy Facebook page if you want to join up on that. And you can chit chat with others there. You can chit chat in our chat room, which I've opened here today. I'll just check in. I haven't had a chance to say hi. Oh, I did have a chance. Okay. And I have had coffee. So if you want to know what I'm like on coffee, this is what I'm like on coffee. And I'm a hyper person to begin with, which is why I'm like this on coffee. So I probably should not have had coffee, but I did it actually on purpose because I know that we have a lot to talk about and there's a lot of uh, strong Aquarian energy today. And that means that um, we need to be aware and conscious. And Aquarius energy is about intellect and analysis and clarity. And I wanted to make sure that I had a really good, clear mind for the show, which means coffee gives that in a lot of ways. It makes me um, probably talk a little bit faster, of course, but, you know, probably you could listen in archive and then slow it down. I don't know. I actually also have my show on YouTube. So if you miss it here, I try and post that. I, I'm not as fast posting that. I usually wait about a week to post the current show and I'm trying to do a, a schedule so I can get everything done and be consistent about it. And it usually works if I post the last week's on the day before the next show. So usually by Monday, you'll have last week's show up on YouTube. Um, I actually am posting, what is it? Yeah, last week's show I have today. So um, I'm caught up. But I just have to put a few things on that. So if you are interested in listening to archives and you can slow down how fast I speak, YouTube is a great option because you can slow it down or speed it up on YouTube. So um, just type in Artful Shelley, A-R-T-F-U-L, Shelley, and you'll find my um, my podcast on there and also some videos for my art as well. So, okay, I'll stop saying so, but, you know, it's a transition word. What can I say? I did post, and I don't know if I said this, I posted today's chart on the Facebook page. I did say that. But I say it again because there's so many things going on, and really the name of the show was changed to reflect what's going on now. 
And um, part of that, a big part of that, and I will speak on it, I, I try to keep it fairly generic politically, but um, I'm really, you know, when you start affecting children, I cannot keep quiet. So I'm just going to let you know, it's not cool to rip children from families for any reason. I'm sorry, that is the wrong way to go. And part of that is astrologically, Venus opposing Mars in the sky today. So Venus the sign of feminine energy, and it can be mothers, but it's in Leo, which is children, and it's opposing Mars and Aquarius. So what happens is Mars' masculine energy is saying, no, we're just going to cut to the heart of the matter and be very clear cut about this. And that's really what uh, the person in charge of the country is saying. We're going to be, you know, this, we have to be very hard line. We have to do this. And, you know, it's zero tolerance. Well, that's not what this country was founded on. This country was founded on embracing families and embracing people of other cultures. So if I lose a few listeners because I'm very adamant about this, then it just tells me where your heart is. And that's not in the right place as far as I'm concerned. And that's really harsh. But in our country, we stand up for families. It was founded on inclusiveness, not exclusiveness. And there has to be a solution and we have to find a solution. I apologize for being radical in my opinion, but um, I'm going to speak up today. That's just the way it is. So anyway, Venus opposite Mars, creating a lot of this energy and Mars and Aquarius, it's a sign of detachment and it's an intellectualization or rationalization of emotion. And as you know, you cannot rationalize emotion. Emotion comes from spirit and emotion comes from the heart and rationalizing it. It's like apples and oranges. You just can't do it. And I think that's a huge part of what's happened to our country as far as uh, religion is that it's been tried to be rationalized and intellectualized. And it isn't about that. And, you know, I've had my issues with religion, but I can tell you, um, you cannot look at religion from a linear standpoint. It is not linear. It is quantum. It is exponential and expansive. And so, you know, when you say something that comes from the heart is linear and can be intellectualized, it's not going to work. And that's what's happening. So that's what we see in Venus opposing Mars in Aquarius. Anyway, that's just one of the many aspects going on. We have an opposition of Saturn and approaching Sun opposition. It's not quite in a direct opposition sign. It's still at 28 Gemini, but it is an end of duplicity or a culmination of a story around duplicity and around telling two different stories. So it is also an intellectualization of energy as well because it is ruled by mercury mercury is in cancer which is still it's like if you look at the chart again it's on facebook under the astro energy fan page um mercury is at 13 degrees cancer and saturn's at six degrees capricorn so they're about seven degrees apart from an exact opposition and that means that they are still in opposition, but Mercury is moving away from that opposition. And Sun is eight degrees on the other side, moving into an opposition. So Mercury opens up the discussion, the thought process, the awareness of the issues. And Sun brings in a connectedness to ego. And um, I mean, I'm sorry, but Sun is ego. And that's what it stands for in astrology. Sorry, not sorry, I guess. <laughs> but it stands for self and the self that's attached to the material world. And a lot of times that means we have this energy of pettiness and we don't see a broader picture because we're trying to defend our own. So that energy is coming into our world right now. We're trying to defend ourselves and our rationalization. And it's not just one person. It's all of us. We have this energy flowing and the counter to it is Sagittarius which is about taking action and doing something of course whatever sign you have the counterbalance is the opposite sign Sagittarius wants to expand spirituality and understanding and knowledge so that's what we need to do of course Mercury and Gemini want to understand as well 
but they may not be as expansive as Sagittarius energy. So we're we're really missing the Sagittarius planet right now. We ex well any planet in Sagittarius. I should qualify that. Jupiter is the ruler of Sagittarius, so of course we can look at that as a secondary modality or planet that helps us clarify what's going on around wisdom and expansion of understanding. So Jupiter is in Scorpio and is one of the corners of the triangle as a trine in astrology, 120 degrees away from Mercury at 13 and 120, well, close, 120. It's actually 122 for Neptune and 119 for Mercury. So we've got Mercury at 13 Cancer, Jupiter at 14 Scorpio, and Neptune at 16 Pisces. Of course, Jupiter and Neptune are retrograde. And so the story, the grand trine story, is going to stir up something deep emotionally in the world. It is a very significant aspect in astrology as far as I'm concerned and we see it every time there's a grand trine going on in whatever sign and this time in water and it seems every time that we have a grand trine in water whether it's triggered by the moon or the sun which we're also going to have again when the sun gets to the middle degrees so you can see it in about 16 days <laughs> I know I'm really fast and I'm probably a little manic um, <laughs> well I shouldn't say manic I should say ADD a little hyper. Anyway, 1111, if you want to make a wish. So um, anyway, we've got the sun energy coming into the mid-range of cancer in about 16 days because it takes the sun a day to go through a sign, a degree of a sign. So it's about 14, 15 degrees away from a trine to Neptune and Jupiter, which means we are going to see this energy again in that amount of time in about 16 days so anyway um the grand trine brings up the deep emotional issue and it tries to get our attention to understand the deeper emotional sensitive side of things the sympathetic side of things and issues surrounding what the planets are talking about so jupiter is talking about expansion in Scorpio, he's looking for a deeper meaning. He's looking to bring out the truth, but he's retrograde, so it's the truth of the past. He's saying, let's go back over those degrees that we had already expressed in the early part of the year when he was at 14 the first time. And between January and – I'll just look it up. It's easier that way. Between – hang on – January, retrograde, 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 and March – so he went back over those degrees, 23 through 13. He's not quite to 13, but he will get to 13. And he was also at 13 in December of last year. I'll even look that up. I'll tell you exactly how far. Yeah, since um, do, 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 December, mid-December, the 11th of December, he started at 13. So from December until he went retrograde, that those degrees have been gone back over and it gives us doubt and it makes us want to understand our psychology around what was going on in those degrees and I can tell you personally those degrees were awakening your sense of self and your value in the world and that's because Scorpio rules value of self to others so you're seeing how you're valued in relationships you're seeing how others value you are they valuing you and you're feeling like you're not valued or you're feeling like now you recognize your value and others need to as well. And then you also have a trine to Neptune, which going and he's retrograde today, going direct. He is very much idealistic and wants to see the commonality of people and wants to merge and actually does so. That energy in your chart, wherever Neptune and Pisces is, you will feel like you have no boundaries. You'll feel like you're part of the whole, part of the collective. And if you pay attention to your, your, um, I want to say moods, mood swings, or even the energy that you feel at any given moment of a day or any given day of a week, 
and start to like step outside of yourself and look back and basically have self-awareness, you can start to recognize patterns of influence in your life, your influence to others and influence on you. And when you start to say, hey, I know this feeling, and I will tell you because I've had this, um, I, I recognize times when I'm more sensitive to things that bother me and less sensitive. And honestly, you know, I'm very cautious about expressing a lot of my personal stuff on this show, but I can tell you just asking for help from the angels will help you. I call on Archangel Michael for a lot and asking for Archangel Michael to help take negative energy off of you works. I've done it a couple times this week and both times it goes away and it's very clear. And it went, and what I'm saying is when you start to recognize that you're so sensitive to things that you're maybe not necessarily feeling like it's something you've created in your life or an emotion that you're generating, definitely ask for a higher source for help. And that can definitely help you through it. And um, just the energy of saying, Archangel Michael, please take this off of me. Whatever this dark energy is, take it off of me. It can really, really raise up your energy and your vibration. So I'm just using that as my personal example of something that I do as a means to get through some of this energy. Excuse me, I just was a little choked up. <laughs> anyway, so having Neptune ideals retrograde means now we're starting to see more clarity and we understand where we may be idealizing something and that the people that we idealize and the situations we idealize may not be capable of living up to our ideal. And so it's about recognizing where we're putting something on the situation that the situation may not be capable of the change or even living up to our own ideals. Having Jupiter trining Neptune, trining Mercury, it is about awareness. It's about the cognizance of the situation and seeing emotional situations for what they truly are outside of emotion. And that's punctuated and reinforced through Mars and Aquarius opposing Venus and in, in uh, Leo. This is a very strong faded moment, being that Venus is at six degrees Leo and the North Node is at six degrees Leo, Mars is at eight degrees Aquarius, and South Node is at six degrees Aquarius. So the energy is about a change around how we interact with our collective, the humanitarian side of things, Mars and Aquarius, humanitarianism, and Venus and Leo, children, creativity, um, where's our heart? Leo rules the heart. It's about heart and it's about humanitarianism. Again, Aquarius energy is about being an individual within the collective, but it is also humanitarianism. So you cannot, even though you are an individual within the collective, you have to be part of a greater story and a greater truth and a greater movement. And that's what Aquarius is about. So the fact that they're on the nodes just hits home how we are really driving as a collective towards a greater truth and a greater understanding of what's going to go on for us. And I have to tell you, um, we are a very Aquarian country. Even though Pluto was at end degrees of um, Capricorn when we were founded, the first three decades or two decades of the founding were in Aquarius. Pluto went into Aquarius just after our country was founded. And it is about the collective and humanitarian ideal. So we've got this grand trying going on in water. We're feeling this very strong energy around emotions and passions, Jupiter and Scorpio. We've got Venus opposing Mars, and we have Saturn in conjunct to Venus right now. Saturn, the authority figure, retrograde. Keep in mind that Pluto and Saturn in Capricorn are both retrograde right now. So this is a pining away for an old story around authoritarianism and hierarchical thinking and paternalism. It's what it stands for. It's the symbology of Capricorn and the symbology of Saturn. Pluto's symbology is about 
the phoenix, rising from the ashes, finding the truth, going deep and burning it to the ground if you cannot get it to work the way you want it to work. So the last, well, not even the last, there's still so many planets I have to touch on. Um, another energy going on today is moon at 16 degrees Virgo, exactly opposite Neptune at 16 Pisces retrograde. So if you look at the chart, you see that this grand trine is bisected by the moon opposition to Neptune. It is women and the mother figure splitting the story and inserting or interjecting the storyline into this. And keep in mind, Virgo is the healer. So Virgo, well, healing energy. So you have women and mother figures speaking up, and it's also about education. It's about the teacher and um, wanting to have a say. At the same time, moon is in sextile to Mercury, which is the voice in Cancer, also is the sign of the mother. So what you have is moon in Virgo, sextile to Mercury in Cancer, which means that the moon sign is Cancer and Mercury sign is Virgo, and they are in mutual reception. And they are within three degrees and just were at exact sextile this morning when the moon was at 13 degrees. So it's only three degrees past and exact, which was early in the morning. And just out of personal curiosity, I'm going to look and see when that was. It was at 2.44 a.m. this morning. So we have this discussion going on and this verbalization of a mother story around healing, around teaching, and cooperation, because sextiles are cooperative energy. We have a sextile going on also between the moon and Jupiter, because remember, the moon is bisecting the grand trine, which means the moon is 60 degrees away from Mercury and 60 away from Jupiter. And then they are 120 away from each other. So if you know basic geometry, geometry it's really going to help you in astrology. So, um, yeah, I hope you've turned down the volume on this because I'm very passionate. I know I'm coming across really loud, probably in your headset, and I apologize for that. But um, honestly, sometimes when you have your own podcast, you know, a lot of times I'm just like, well, I want to be really um, embracing of everyone and, you know, letting people know that they have a place to go with many points of view. But Sometimes my Scorpio rising, Scorpio moon, Neptune conjunction in the first house gets the better of me, and I do have to speak up. So anyway, moving on, we have Mercury, um, let me see, is in conjunct to Pluto and in conjunct to, or excuse me, opposite to Pluto and opposite to Saturn. And interestingly, he is basically splitting the difference between Pluto and Saturn because Saturn's at six degrees, Pluto is at 20 you bring them together at seven degrees and you have 13, which is exactly where Mercury is and the opposite side. When I say the opposite side, I'm talking about opposite side of the world. So when you think about where these planets are in a circle, they are encircling the earth. That is the flattening out to the best of the ability of um, the system that has been put in place by Western astrology to give you an idea of where the planets are in the sky around the earth because this is a geocentric orbit photograph it's not a heliocentric because remember the sun is part of the outer ring which means it's our perspective from earth so mercury is in sextile to uranus or excuse me mercury is in uh in opposition i was talking about that i apologize it was mercury splitting the difference between pluto and saturn what does that mean it means that Mercury energy, thinking, thought around home and family, the homeland, is directly between the deeper understanding and the things that are going on with Pluto. Again, Pluto retrograding Capricorn is going back over old dogma of society. It is a slower moving planet. It creates a vibration around many generations and i will tell you um aquarius generations um pluto in aquarius or not aquarius excuse me pluto in i'm just trying to um pluto in gemini generations probably are not alive still pluto in leo generations are the ones in the 70s 
people in the 70s, so they are feeling an inconjunct to this energy. That means that if you have Pluto and Leo, which means up until about, I want to say 60, no, 59-ish, 1959, Pluto was in Leo. And probably from 1950 is right around where you're feeling hit by a, a strong in conjunct to the Pluto and Capricorn, which means authority is being challenged for your generation. And you are also trying to maintain your authority as your generation ages. So we also have this Saturn in Capricorn, again, opposing Mercury. And part of this split with Mercury, it's just such a I mean, I'm looking at this chart, and it's very profound from many standpoints, from the grand trine, from the nodes, from the split with Mercury. Um, everything about this chart is just screaming major shift and major change and awareness over an issue. And it's probably multiple issues, honestly. Um, we also have, remember, Jupiter and Scorpio is about foreign cultures. So, yes, it's Mexico, Mexico border, but it's also foreign cultures with what's going on um, in Asia right now. It can be the Middle East. It can, it's just all over the world. And it's not just our culture. It's also um, cultures in other places. It's Europe and what they're going through. I know there's some issues in Germany right now as well. And so, yeah, it's, it's a global thing. It's not just here. It's a global thing. Um, let's see. If I don't touch on the last three issues here, we're not going to make it through. So Jupiter is squaring Mars today. Jupiter in Scorpio squaring Mars at eight degrees. It's Mars as Mars moves forward. It is going to be stronger and stronger around a disagreement between humanitarian issues and the hidden cultural differences that we have. That's, the Mars, Aquarius, Jupiter, Scorpio energy. So I'm just going to leave it at that. Um, I could get so deep into all of these that there's only so much time I can do it. At the same time, on the other side of the globe, we have a square between Uranus in Taurus and Venus today. So, of course, Venus rules Taurus and um, Uranus does not rule Leo, but Uranus is about, again, independence, autonomy, detachment, and something I don't talk about a lot, but I have talked about it, is Uranus and Aquarius, synonymous, are energy of power. It's one of the power dynamics of the zodiac. Pluto has a power dynamic. Uranus has a power dynamic. Saturn has a power dynamic. Uranus, the power dynamic with Uranus is autonomy. They don't want to be told what to do. They are squaring Venus. So there is a collective energy around the powers of being. In this regard, Uranus and Taurus is talking to the bankers and the financiers of the world. And Venus and Leo is saying, this is not okay. You are approaching things from a practical, pragmatic, intellectual standpoint, and we're talking about connectedness. Now, keep in mind that Leo is opposite Aquarius, and Uranus rules Aquarius, and Mars is also in Aquarius right now. So Venus is kind of, she's at odds with two very strong powers, Mars and Uranus, and she's trying to have a say. And my computer, I just blew out. Nope, I didn't. Thank goodness. It went black. So it went black and I thought I, my energy was too high and I do do that occasionally. So hopefully that isn't going to stick around. Anyway, so we have Uranus in square to Venus and she's kind of in a parting square. So we only have a f two more degrees. So in the next few days, she will be moving away from that Uranus square and we will see some of that ease, a little bit of it ease. But um, I can tell you in the next couple of days, this chart really shows that we are in a major ideological battle. Um, trying to see if there are any other aspects that I haven't touched on. I've touched on everything that I have in this chart right here. And that isn't even talking about where the planets are going in the near future, which I will just mention because it's just... Um, 
it's going to run too long. So Neptune did just retrograde yesterday. And, well, I'm just going by the chart. So, you know, overall view yesterday. I couldn't tell you the exact time. But, and then we have Mars retrograding. I believe it is on the 25th on my mom's birthday. Let's double check that. No, it retrogrades the 26th. So, um, and now I have, yeah, 18th, uh, Neptune went retrograde at 7.26 p.m. Eastern. And Mars, or, yeah, Mars retro can't even get the words out, retrogrades on um, the 26th. And since we have a show next week, I'm not going to talk about Mars retrograde in great detail. And then the day after is a full moon in Capricorn. So we'll talk about that next week's show. But I'm giving you a heads up because, of course, that's going to also add to the fuel of this energy um, with the full moon in Capricorn. So I probably have added more confusion to the matter i'm sorry but um yeah anyway it probably would help once in a while to have somebody on the show to bounce some ideas off of and i really would love it if anybody who knows a bit more about astrology would like to come on and be a guest on the show just email me shelly at astrologerangel.com and then maybe we could get you on the show because it would be kind of fun to have somebody else to talk astrology with on the air Okay, so let's take a quick break, and then we'll be back and take calls. If you want to call in, the number is 347-994-3365. If you call in and you want your question answered, hit the one that lets me know you have a question, and we'll take calls on the other side of the break. Thanks. In these days of stress, running around, responsibilities, we all need a little place to go to to make it all better. Is that place sports, football? Or maybe you like to garden, paint, or just listen to music. Wherever your happy place is, you can find a shirt or mug to reflect that happy place. At myhappyplace.rocks, we have a variety of lifestyle products, including iPhone cases, pajamas, and pet items, all with beautiful, colorful designs, which help us go to our happy place. Stop by on the web for great gift ideas for others, and yourself. MyHappyPlace.rocks Lenny Pickett appears courtesy of Random Act Records. Check him out at RandomActRecords.com Hello and welcome back. This is Shelley Overton. You are listening to the Astro Energy Astrology Show on Blog Talk Radio. And if you would like to get a reading with me, you can get me at angeliczodiac.com and astrologerangel.com. I would love to do a reading for you. And there are a number of different options depending on your budget. So anyway, I had written some notes before we started and I just want to double check those real quick here. Oh, I wanted to mention also the Venus opposite um, Mars, and oh, I don't didn't put yeah. I think that was the the um, aspect I was thinking of when I typed this. But the fight, having a fight versus letting go of something. So this is kind of an energy I've been feeling too in my world about um, feeling like things keep getting piled on and piled on and piled on. And it is part of the energy of what's going on, what we just discussed. But internally, you have this feeling like, okay, I I can't take it anymore. So you want to either fight or let it go. And I can tell you, Mars and Aquarius, it's about letting it go. And I think because of all the energy in Capricorn right now, that letting go is punctuated, but also difficult to do. So what happens when you let go is you don't say, okay, what I don't want is what I do want. You're saying that I'm just not going to give my power over and feel a victim to what is going on anymore. And I'm going to allow the universe to show me the way to go instead of forcing which way to go. So Anyway, I just wanted to add that. So let's take some callers. 
Hi, 262. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. Who is this? It's Michelle. I'm calling from Wisconsin. Hi, Michelle. Have you called in before? I don't think so. Okay, wonderful. So I'm going to ask you first to give me where you're born, because that's how I have to put it in for the best results, and then you can tell me your date and time. So go ahead. Okay. I was born in Kenosha, Wisconsin. And And what? uh, (laughs) October. I'm sorry. October 12th. Mm Mm-hmm. You need the date, 1966 at 1.19 okay. p.m. Okay, wonderful. All right, what can I do for you? Um, I have two problems right now. <laughs> one okay. is my mother. Mm-hmm. And the other one, my love life. But okay. my mother is weighing on me even more right now. Aww. Okay. Well, um, yeah, your mother is not a surprise. You have the moon today. Remember I said it was at 16 Virgo. That's right on your Pluto at 19 Virgo. It's at the end degrees of the house of your mom in how you interact with relationships in a dynamic. So it's not surprising to me that moon is kind of triggering both relationship and mom at this point. And at the same time, Mm -hmm. Venus, Venus is also representative of mom and the feminine energy. And she is in the last degrees of your house of marriage and partnership. And she also happens to be within four degrees of your Jupiter, which is transformation. So, and just to add more to that, you have Mercury and Cancer also in your house of marriage and partnership. So Cancer is mom. And it's (laughs) so much going on in your chart and opposite um, Saturn right in your first house. So, um, do you want to elaborate on, you know, what it is you are going through and then I can kind of address that? Yeah. Um, well, my mom has, um, I don't know if you're familiar with it, Lewy body dementia and Um, she's just, I just moved her to mm -hmm. a new place and she has full blown delirium. She's so confused. Mm -hmm. She hit her caregiver yesterday. I took her to the emergency Mm -hmm. room. They won't give her Mm -hmm. anything. I just feel like I don't know what to do with her. She's so out of control. She thinks everyone's trying to kill her. They're well, going to burn the house down, poison her, right. you know, all that. Yeah. Sadly, I mean, we can see a lot of energy around parents through what's going on astrologically and where the planets are when you were born. And moon for you is at 29 Virgo. And, mm-hmm. I mean, that means end degrees and, and health. And it's in the um, the ninth house, which can make extreme behavior. I'm not saying that that was how she was all of her life necessarily, but it is being triggered right now. And um, Uranus, the planet of eccentricity, shall we say, and Mm -hmm. the unexpected, unusual behavior is right within eight degrees of your moon. So mom is influenced by this energy. And also just over into Libra in the same house is your Venus and the sun conjunction. So you've got a lot of energy all clustered around mom and feminine energy, but also Mm -hmm. that unusual stuff. What I would say, um, definitely also, I'm going to just touch real quick on Mars and Aquarius, because again, Mars in Aquarius is opposite Venus and Leo. So this is also bringing in the energy like more in spades um, of that eccentricity and what to do with unusual behavior. I would say that it is going to get better, but probably I would say a couple days when Venus goes into Libra, it's going to calm her a little bit more, but that Mars and Aquarius is adding fuel to the fire. I mean, not knowing any of her planets, Mars and Aquarius is like, it's not relating to her specific uh, situation, but it's like activated energy around activism. So it is, it's like the collective anger is coming out and yes. having Uranus so close to her moon in your chart, like this is all based on what I see in your chart. It's really activating that anger energy. So she is lashing out. It would charge her, so to speak. And it's an in conjunct. Right. So you've got this really intense energy with the moon and Mars today that's triggering that part of your chart. Um, I would say also 
with the moon at the end degrees of the eighth house, that's kind of a culmination of something. And so I would say you're doing the best you can. It is kind of a natural inclination of people who have strong Virgo in their charts to be like the hardest on themselves, perfectionists, and also yeah. completely humble and want to do the best by people and never feel like you've done enough. And I want to be the one yeah. to tell you <laughs> you're doing all you can, okay? If you've moved her and they know what's going on, you're doing the best you can. It's okay. I'm here to tell you it's right. okay, all right? And Thanks. I completely understand your energy, and I completely understand how it can feel like you're somehow not because you have Saturn in your first house, you have a Capricorn rising, like the Virgo and the Capricorn together is the person who can never do enough for people and feel responsible for yeah. everyone's stuff. And I want to tell me. you that. <laughs> yes, I know. And guess what? Saturn and Pluto <laughs> in your first house are trying to teach you that at some point you have to let go and you have to know that know. your mom came in this life for a reason she is culminating yeah. her story in a certain way and you are mm-hmm. an amazing daughter to be there for her and be her advocate and it's okay don't be so hard on yourself okay it is like i said earlier about letting Thanks. go versus the fight and you've been fighting and fighting and just take a breath know that it's okay and honestly you have to be your own mom right now and say you're going to be okay. It's okay. It's okay to mother yourself. It's okay to nurture yourself and say that you're a good person and you're doing the best you can. Okay. It really Thanks. is okay. Yeah. Yeah. Can I you I just see if she's in you. a safe place? Oh, I want to hug is, you too. <laughs> I know. Thanks. Um, let me, let me. Can you see if quick. she's in a, because I keep second guessing myself too, is like, because I took her out of the other place and put her in right. this place thinking it's but it's a little mm-hmm. bit farther from my house, and then she fell twice since she's been there, and then this happened, and I'm Ugh. like, oh, my God, maybe I shouldn't have moved her. You In know what I mean? So, um, yeah, and because, you know, sometimes <laughs> I want to believe her. It's hard to know. I mean, you know, she I, really could be getting abused or something. You know, I hate know. to say this, I but, think I, think so, that, but I think you're probably going to move her again. Um, and definitely the Jupiter. So what I'm looking at right now is Jupiter because Jupiter's retrograde and, um, Jupiter squares Mars right now. Um, it's a wide square, but it's, it's still squaring and it's on your South node and the South node is, it is an energy of faded behavior. Like I said before, Mm -hmm. and, um, just the square between Jupiter and Mars and also Venus. So there's like, this is another one that I didn't even see before. It's like a T in the sky. So Mars is opposite Venus and Jupiter is squaring both of them saying, you know, there's a tug of war going on of sorts. Jupiter goes direct in July. I would say, keep an eye out. If you feel the need to move her, I think that you're probably going to move her again. And Mars also retrogrades before the end of the month, which means two planets of action or transformation are changing energy. Or actually Jupiter is just squaring Mars, but Mars is going to retrograde. And let me see, Mars retrogrades on the 26th, like I said. So, um, I know this is such stressful stuff, and I, I it's sorry, so you know. hard to move her. You don't even know. Yeah. <laughs> it is to well, move her. Um, oh my gosh! No, it's okay. So let me just look a little bit closer because I want to see the the thing. The thing that's going on is mom is. I, I will just assign Venus to mom because that's probably a big part of it. So you want Venus, her birthday? Would that help? Yeah, it, it wouldn't hurt. So why don't you shoot that at me real quick here? She's January 8th, 1942. Okay. Where was she born? Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Okay. And let me see. Atlas. January 8th, 1942. Mm-hmm. Okay. And you don't know the time soldiers to sunrise chart. Okay. I, I have no idea what time. Yeah. Sorry. That's fine. Fine. Okay. Oh, my computer. There we go. Okay. So I'm just gonna keep track of this as I'm gonna. I, I'm buying a little extra time because I want to save it 
in case you call back. So I'm just putting okay. in the fact that she's your mom. So if I okay. sound like I'm typing furiously, that's what I'm doing just so I can save it for you for a future date. Thank you. And Thank so you. you're not just listening to a bunch of typing going on. You're welcome. Okay. <laughs> So mom has a sunrise of Capricorn also. She's got Pluto on her sun, which is very big. I mean, obviously you have Saturn and Capricorn and a Capricorn, or not Saturn, um, you have a Capricorn rising, but Saturn in your first house. Mom's going through Pluto on her sun and her Venus is in late degree Capricorn as well. So she's going through a major self-transformation as well. Um, and mm-hmm. she's got moon on her, she's 10 degrees off of her moon, so in the next 24 hours, her moon, she'll be in a moon conjunction on Neptune at 29. It is an energy of culmination of a storyline. So this is part astrologically, this is part of something that, I mean, this is so difficult for people to really grasp, I think about coming in and having a storyline we do have storylines. We don't, we have free will. So we are free to do something or not do something about that. But she has a grand trine in earth, which means that this, and she's got two planets in Capricorn, two planets in Taurus and two planets in Virgo. And they're all pretty close to a trine. She's got, um, I'm just trying to figure out, I've got to switch this chart to see if that's a Mercury or a Venus. Hang on a second. It's Mercury. So she's got Mercury joining, or Mercury at 28. And I know some of this, it goes over people's heads, but I'm just saying it to help me ground. Mercury at 28, Capricorn. Okay. Uranus at 26, Taurus. And a Moon-Neptune conjunction at 26 and 29, Virgo. So it's a culmination of a story, okay? And it's around her connection to the material world and what she chan- she is trying to accomplish on a higher level level okay and the reason i give that to you is to just help you understand that what you go through in a mundane sense is not necessarily what's going on in a spiritual sense okay right she also yeah she has pluto conjunct chiron in leo which is venus is on pluto moving towards her chiron in leo and the north nodes there this is a very this is like if it makes you any more confident in the situation that it isn't your fault or it isn't something that you can somehow control this is part of her storyline for her life okay and it's part of something she chose to live out as a learning experience which we may not necessarily understand in a mundane sense in a living our lives day to day we have such a limited scope of what's going on in our world from a spiritual perspective so I I just you know, I, I don't. I guess I don't know how to encourage you other than to tell you, her chart has a lot of hits on it as well. Neptune is on the South Node for her, which is past life issues around um, boundaries and and cognizance. And I do want to tell you that whatever she's going through in a mental capacity doesn't necessarily, it doesn't, not even necessarily, does not affect her spirit life and her higher self. So it is literally a story of this plane of existence. And this is something that she has in her chart and it is somewhat faded. So it isn't something that you necessarily could have done anything about there's such a strong energy i mean if if you remember earlier in the show when i said there's a trine and then the moon was bisecting that trine she's got the same thing Mm -hmm. in her chart only neptune is bisecting it right now and that has to do with boundaries it has to do with spiritual connectedness and awareness and it is around the story of being on earth in the material body in the physical plane and um it honestly is in her chart and she has uranus on mars right now she was going through that uranus conjunction to mars in aries at 28 degrees and now it's at one degree so it honestly probably increased the energy around what she's going through. And as far as safety, let me just look here real quick and see about that. Um, I would be cautious. And especially right now with uh, Pluto retrograde, Saturn retrograde, Mars going retrograde in two weeks, definitely 
you want to keep an eye out on things. And Neptune just went retrograde yesterday, and that will bring you more clarity about it. And it will show more clarity about what's going on with her. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. I would, I would tell you to be very cautious. Um, I can't sit here on a national international podcast and, and, uh, you know, bad mouth an organization, but I will tell you to be cautious and it just makes sense to be aware of behavior. And if you feel, especially with Neptune going retrograde in Pisces, you're much more clear about things. Trust your gut. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, I yeah. do. Okay, good. I kind of, a lot of things you say go like over my head, I feel like. Oh, like I'm, I'm trying sorry. to understand. But what can I clarify oh, no, for it, you? Um, I'm just like, is it kind of like she's, I mean, towards the end of her life in a way and like trying to maybe connect? Because mm -hmm. it's like mm -hmm. she's in this life, but not in this that's life. A, and... That's a good point because, I, I mean, there's only so much I want to talk to people on the air about. But since you brought it up, right. yes, it is a culmination of, you know, there are aspects in her chart that are showing that she's really wrapping up a storyline. And that is yeah, part that's of what her I kind of get yeah. from what that's, you're that's saying. That's exactly right. Yes. And then Neptune okay. is about, um, well, a couple things, you know, Jupiter is about transformation, but Neptune is about clarity. And I definitely want to say when people are going through transitions closer to the end of their life, they will seem like from our perspective, it's very material. We have boundaries up between the other side and our world. Otherwise, you know, we're not really in a place. And I will tell you when Pluto gets to Pisces, that will change. But right now we're not necessarily in a space where we can integrate the other side in a material world. And so when we get closer to the other side at the end of our lives, we start, it bleeds through. It really does bleed through. And yeah. so, you know, I mean, I remember my grandmother, um, she was in hospice and she was like, she was talking to uh, Jesus on the other side. And he, mm -hmm. all her life, she had been, uh, you know, very God fearing, quote unquote, God fearing. And that like, if I don't do, you know, if I don't go to church every Sunday, then I'm going to go to hell. And she was like the most sainted right. woman I know, you know, this woman <laughs> was so giving and wonderful and loving, but she always was afraid she was not going to go to heaven. And I'm like, how could you possibly think that you wouldn't? You're, you know, you're this right, amazing right. woman. But um, right before she passed, she said she, and she told my aunts and uncles, I saw Jesus and he said, it's okay. I'm waiting for you. And it really gave her, I got chills. It gave her such peace yeah. before she passed mm -hmm. and so right. you know I definitely believe that the Neptune energy is about the blurring of the veil between life and death and we start to see things that from our left brain material no that can't be real world we see it as you're going crazy I don't think they're going crazy yeah. I think yeah. that it's bleeding through and they're actually more aware of what's going on than we are so um, that's my little soapbox for today. <laughs> but hmm. yeah, I it's think interesting um, for sure. Yeah, if you if you want to talk to me privately, I can also I I can expand a little bit on it. But um, I just try and keep certain things a little bit more private because you know it is a podcast. I don't want to like air your dirty laundry for everything. I shouldn't say dirty. It's not dirty laundry. It's just your private yeah, things, yeah. you know, go into your closet and say, Oh, I can't believe you were wearing this, you know, that kind of thing. So yeah, it I is. Um, there's a lot going on for her and it is definitely an energy that culminates a storyline, but um, your love of her and your consideration and caring is phenomenal. It is. I don't, I mean, to me, it is like Mother Teresa, you know, it's caring for the people who need it. Aww. And you're a good daughter. And I know it's a huge burden to try and work through things, especially when you have other entities in there involved and you aren't there 24-7. And I would say the only thing that came through just now that I would also help you with is if you do end up having to move her, find a place that has uh, video capabilities where you can actually check in on her through video and I don't know I I would think there are some places like that at this stage of the game but if you can find one that would also help you and um energetically yeah, astrologically yeah find a place that you can check in online and at any time night or day see video of what your mom's up to and that will also help ease yeah. your mind okay 
For sure. Well, thank right. you so much. Well, I wish there, you the best. I know, you talk to me for so long, but is there anything <laughs> about love in life? Can I ask you that, or did oh, we go um, too long? Yeah, let me let, – no, no, no. I'll, I'll just touch on it real quick because I do have a couple other callers I want to get to, but I will touch okay. on it, and I'll probably go over – for the caller's waiting, I'll probably go over a little bit of time at the end of the show so I can get you in. Um, okay, so there is an, an energy – actually a lot of fast-moving energy in your house and marriage and partnership. So you've got Mercury there, and you've got Venus there, and Venus is on Jupiter transformation and bringing somebody in, maybe someone of foreign culture – somebody who might be larger than life. And honestly, you're probably attracted to that person or a person of that type. You've got a lot of intensity and passion with your Scorpio planets and Jupiter's right there. I would say closer to the end of the year or even in between August and October is going to be a better time for you. You're going to have, um, I think your outlook is going to be much more positive and optimistic. Jupiter coming up on your Neptune at 20 Scorpio is going to bring someone in or a, a really strong opportunity. And then also all of next year, Jupiter's going into your house of friendship and, and Jupiter is also about travel. It'll be in the sign of travel, which is Sagittarius. So I think that there's going to be some opportunity there, but yes, I mean, you've got a lot of stuff right now that could really increase the opportunity and Mars going into your second house is also going to bring in someone who might be more eclectic and, or, a genius energy. It's the Aquarian energy. So that's science. I mean, anything STEM, science, technology, math, engineering, somebody who's very um, left brain and analytical, but also, um, you know, really connects and he might be an eccentric person. So just look out for that or somebody who may <laughs> need some attention. It's the Leo slash Aquarius axis. Um, but as Venus gets closer to your house of commitment and gets onto your natal Mars and Mars gets into the house of coupling. That's a really strong energy. So within a month, maybe, Oh, actually I forgot. Mars goes retrograde. Hang on a second. It's going to be closer to August. Yeah. August to October. That's my time frame for you. Okay. Okay. And it'll also be better when Jupiter goes direct in July and listen to this podcast again. You can get it on iTunes. You can get it on, blog talk but listen again because you're going to want to go back and there, hear things that's why I record my readings because there's so much information okay. coming that people it blows by people so fast you know just go back over yeah, it and then listen it again once or twice so I apologize because I'm so fast but I got to try and get it in before the show's over okay thank you from the bottom of my heart I really appreciate it you're welcome it. sweetheart my you're heart goes kind. out to you thank you I'll, I'll send thank some you. reiki to your mom you're welcome bye thank you you're welcome take care Okay, 917. Hi, how are you? And I will try and get everybody oh. in to see you. Okay, so who is this? Hi, Shelly. Um, this is Siva. I usually call from 347, but. Okay, I thank you. The number. 347. <laughs> Let me see if I can find you. It was all the way down at the wrong area code. Okay. Yeah, Tell me your first, first name again, Gina? Uh, no, Siva. S I B A. Oh, S I B A. Let me see. How do yeah. I not have you? It must be on my other. Um, yeah, I don't have probably. You, so. It's been a while. Yeah. Yeah. Let me let me just. I apologize, but let me just put you in again, real quick. And okay. okay, hang on one second. Just put in your area because I can find you quickly this time. So remember nine one seven. Okay, where were you born yeah. first? Uh, Brooklyn, New York. Okay. And this actually helps people who are trying to learn astrology by giving dates because I don't generally give the dates for repeat callers, so it helps. Anyway. Go ahead and give me birth and time and date and time. Uh, uh, June twenty fourth, um, eighty seven. Happy birthday! At, oh, wonderful. yes, thank you. <laughs> at four a.m. on the dot. Oh the my! Didn't you have a purpose? <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Wonderful. All right, so let me just save that. We got you in the computer now. And what can I do? you and I, I have to tell you I know it took a long time with the last caller but I really believe she needed it and I will take a couple minutes with you but I want to get to the last caller after you so tell me what your question is and I'll try and answer it as quickly and succinctly as I can okay cool um it's quick um I'm probably mm-hmm. going to call you anyway for like a birthday okay. reading anyway but um I oh, okay, just wonderful. ended a relationship <laughs> mm-hmm. and um okay. I know a little bit about his chart, but I know like he mm-hmm. has like Neptune conjunct his ascendant natally. Okay. And he uh, has what, like, what problems line? with drinking. Okay, he's, what's um line? he's an, he's a Scorpio, uh Scorpio sun. Um Okay, what's his rising? I can give you his 
Um, I don't have time to take his his chart, but because I, I just put yours uh, in, I'll just read that. But what rising? Yeah. Does I, I know he's one degree Capricorn rising, and he has okay. two degrees uh, Scorpio yeah. Sun. So I can tell you and right I away. He has like a late degree Pisces moon, so he has a problem with drinking. Okay. <laughs> Interestingly, your Neptune is retrograde, and and that makes you very sober, <laughs> and it's in Capricorn, yes, and you're I having Saturn. <laughs> yeah, you're having Saturn on your Neptune right now, so it's making you even more aware of that energy. And if he has a Capricorn rising, Saturn also is. Um, it, what year was he born? Eighty five. 85. So he's a couple of years before you, which means uh, mm-hmm. Neptune was probably four degrees. So Saturn is also pretty close to his Neptune. So it's making him wake up to the repercussions. That's what Saturn's doing. Yeah. And so yeah. Um, if, I mean, if you're wondering about him, I would say, you know, right now you have Vesta in the 12th or in the, um, Basically, Vesta is in Sagittarius, so there's probably behavior he's exhibiting that is not mm-hmm. faithful. It's very really bipolar and a little narcissistic. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. I, after yeah. the relationship ended, he came clean that he actually cheated. So yeah, it I was going to say he's sense. not faithful. Vesta was, in your husband yeah. marriage and partnership in Sag is like, nope, sorry, I'm sorry, he's not faithful but um it was so crazy because like everything else was so aligned like like I never Mm -hmm. had any aspects as strong as with him like our sons were like exactly trying Mm -hmm. our Mm -hmm. um venuses were exactly could be like a a libra like a 11 Mm -hmm. degree libra venus like it was so Mm -hmm. everything was so yeah it was like he was almost well that means it's it's faded and karmic and you know like so is there a, a specific question you want answered because I mean you know yeah, I, I can get want, into these very in depth I don't have time I'm sorry so, I just wanted to know if okay. he was if he was gonna tr- like to keep trying to come back because he's having an issue letting go of the relationship mm-hmm. and um yeah. like I, I we have a power struggle because my Pluto is like on, right. literally on his son so right. um I'm just like I don't I kind of want to move on I've been um I guess you can see Uranus is in my 12th house so I've been having like really will, prophetic dreams <laughs> okay, I will say the the quick answer, I mean, because there's a lot going on in your chart. The quick answer is you will move on. But um, Saturn okay. is going to go forward. And when Saturn goes forward and then ultimately ends up in Aquarius, both of those combinations, and there's so many things that are like pushing you towards moving on. And one is Saturn on your Neptune. But it's retrograde. Mm-hmm. So, of course, you're going back in the old story, the old commitment. But when Saturn goes direct... Mm-hmm. And I will quickly find that for you. I want to say it's September because I'm so looking Mm -hmm. forward to that, honestly. Um, It's (laughs) September 6th. When Saturn goes direct, Mm -hmm. it's like the final pass through of the issue. And then you will move on. And then, of course, Saturn joins up with Pluto at the end degrees of your house of commitment in 2020. And then that is another breaking moment. And then when Saturn goes into Aquarius, Mm -hmm. it's like for good. Okay, so you may have, <laughs> excuse me, a couple of years of back and forth with this guy, even though you want to move on. Um, it's mm-hmm. really karmic in nature, mm-hmm. and so that that is yeah, part because of it. he really did help me this last, like we met last year, and I mm-hmm. I needed like a a transition into a new state and right, new, uh, just knew everything, and he kind of helped yeah. me a lot because I had a lot of bumps in the road. So mm-hmm. I kind of stayed with him for a longer time because I felt mm-hmm. like I didn't want to feel like I was using him. Yes. But now yes. that I'm together, it's like now he's falling apart and I'm just mm-hmm. like, I can't do this. And like I said, there, the drinking. They, yeah, there is a lot going on and I can give you deeper insight, but I can't do it today. So if you do okay. want to call for a reading, it would be I wonderful. Will. I could really <laughs> explore more in what's going on, the dynamics, because there's a I lot. Will definitely. So. I know. Okay. I will definitely call. <laughs> Thank Aww, you. Oh, your sweetheart. Well, you take care, and thanks for the call today, and I'll talk to you next time or, you know, privately, okay? Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Bye, Siba. Okay. Bye. Okay. One last call and question, and then we can wrap it up. Hi, 202. How are you? Hey, Sally. How's it going? Good. What? Who am I talking to? Is this Kay? No, sorry. I'm like, you know me, don't you? It's Kay. <laughs> yeah, I do, but, um, you know, I have actually, believe it or not, multiple 202s, and you never know, so I always have to ask. It's very presumptuous of like, me. It's not you. <laughs> so anyway, what can I do for you today, Kay? 
Um, I just want you to put your pretty eyes on my chart and see what pops. Um, oh, you're always so cute. Looking for love and work. Um, okay, love and work. You said. Mhm. Okay. Well, let's see here. Um, Venus in your house of commitment means that there's some attention being given to you, and um. You should be seeing it, I would think, pretty soon. You've got um, Venus and Leo is, like, attention-getting. And let's see what else we have here. And, of course, Mercury is going to be there. I'm just trying to estimate here. About two weeks, Mercury will be in Leo, and that will also give you some attention. Actually, even now, in Cancer, Mercury in Cancer is making you want to hold up a little bit more in the home. And it's probably also bringing you, like, I want to have a partner. I want somebody to, Mm -hmm. you know, cuddle with and snuggle with. And mm-hmm. um, when Mercury goes into Leo, if there's someone out there who may be keeping their feelings close to the chest, that'll give them the impetus to bring it out and actually tell you. Of course, okay. Mars, yeah, Mars and Aquarius, so this is the little fly in the ointment right now. Mars and Aquarius is the detacher. And so, of mm-hmm. course, when Mars got to um, 22 Capricorn, that was like, okay, the end of one story around something going on that was more like career. I know we've talked a lot about career and what's going on with that, mm-hmm. but it's also the beginning of some type of situation around romance. So there may have been somebody that you've been dealing with who's older and more like an older gentleman, more mature, whatever that may have been coming in again, mm-hmm. all these retrograde planets, honestly, it's, it's going to be a summer of like pulling back and, things not really culminating until the fall and into the winter. Mm -hmm. The fall and winter this Mm -hmm. year are really when things are going to move forward for everybody. And right now it's really honestly going back and really creating the structure of what we want and how it's going to be. But for you, because Mars is going retrograde in your house of couples, which for those who Mm -hmm. don't know, that's my second house. So the second house is about the love and the actual commitment of the couple, not commitment, commitment date, but it is also to me, when you couple up, when you have a tangible relationship. Aquarius is, honestly, there are probably multiple guys. And if you look around, the ones who are the intellects, the ones who are analytical and maybe not seeming romantic, those are the ones who are probably interested, but they won't show it because it's Aquarius and they don't want to like expose their feelings. They're more the mental. So if they come to you and just look for the guys who are wanting to talk about things and ideas, those are the ones who are probably interested in you right now. Okay. Yeah, and no, it's so honestly, true. I have someone with an yeah. Aquarius moon that is. Okay. And you also have the Mars Venus opposition. So that's men and women trying to come together. And then it's also on the North and South node. So it's faded. So honestly, right now, when Mars goes retrograde, look at the people that are there because the next, I mean, those are the ones that if somebody kind of, was coming close and pulls back when Mars goes back direct is when it's going to culminate one way or the other, but it's okay. probably going to culminate because Mars goes direct. It gets all the way back into Capricorn. And when it goes direct, it'll be into Aquarius again, but it'll be the beginning of your house of couples in Capricorn, which means commitment. And by then Saturn will also be close to going direct just after Mars goes direct. Saturn goes direct. So mm-hmm. August time frame is going to be better for love. Okay. August. Okay. Yeah. Yes, and also ma'am. Jupiter going direct will help as well. Cause it's in Scorpio and, and it's in um, people who are, it's in your 11th house of friendship. So you're going to find some for that too. Okay. Yay. Yeah. Thank look for me. friends Look for the guys who aren't necessarily showing their cards. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yes, ma'am. And yep. I will so talk much. to you again soon because we're over time. Okay. Anyway, thanks for waiting. Okay. And I'll talk Have to you at another day. You too. Bye, Kay. Good talking to you. Okay. okay. And that's the end of the show for this week. Please do call in next week because, again, we're going to talk about the full moon and Mars retrograde. Take care. See you next week. Bye. Stopping by Astro Energy this week. If you would like to get a hold of Shelly Overton, you can get her at astrologerangel.com, on Facebook at Astro Energy or Astrologer Angel. The music was provided by Kevin McLeod at incompetech.com with additional music by Ironwood Rain. Check them out on the net at ironwoodrain.com.
To subscribe, please click the picture of Shelly on the right or the red button below.